Mrs. Johnson, just to clarify, you said you had no idea how this got in there, no? I mean, could you could you have fallen on it or? Okay, sure. Hello and welcome to the second video in the ENT Basics series. My name is Dr. Omar. And I'm Dr. Nicola Lam. Hello. And today we'll be talking about foreign bodies, specifically some of the best methods to remove foreign bodies. Yeah, like tighter immigration laws. The best method and gold standard for removing objects from the ears, nose and throat is to send your patient back in time and tell them not to put things into their ears, nose or throat. If there is no time machine available, we have some top tips for you. First up, the ear. This is the ear of an adult human being. The external auditory meatus leads into the ear canal, which leads down to the tympanic membrane, which is the start of the middle ear. Foreign bodies will lodge in the external ear canal, and one should be wary of the risk of tympanic perforation, both from the foreign body itself and when removing it. You will come across adults with foreign bodies in the ear, such as end of ear phones, cotton wool buds, earrings, but the majority of your work when it comes to foreign bodies in the ears will be children who will mainly put anything they can get their fat little hands on. There are two main categories of foreign bodies in the ear. One, organic, and two, non-organic. Organic foreign bodies need to be removed sooner rather than later due to the risk of infection. Non-organic foreign bodies can wait till the next available ENT appointment given there are no signs of infection or pain. The one important exception to this is batteries. As they are potentially corrosive, they need to be removed ASAP and need urgent referral to the ENT service. Over and out. Is the object in the right or the left ear? If you're in a non-ENT clinic, if you're in A&E or a general practice surgery or on the ward, then you're likely to be limited um, to just the shiny ear light torch pen, or as it is apparently called, an otoscope, you idiot. The otoscope is a fairly straightforward piece of kit. We have the otoscope itself and the adapter, which should be twisted on until it's firmly secure, as so. We can then easily twist the bezel around the otoscope to turn the light on, as so. When using the otoscope, one should hold it much like one holds a pen. It should be only used by those trained to, because it can be dangerous in the wrong hands. To straighten the patient's ear canal, one should pull the pinna posteriorly and superiorly in adults, or posteriorly and inferiorly in children, though this can vary. Once looking inside the canal, one should obviously try to visualise the foreign body mentioned, but also look out for any signs of trauma, granulation or infection. It should be noted that with normal otoscopic examination, the patient shouldn't experience any pain unless there is some ectitis externa or trauma in the ear canal. To remove a foreign body from the ear, there are three broad categories. The first is small objects or flies, which can be flushed out using saline or olive oil. This is especially useful with living creatures, which, once olive oil has been applied, will die a slow and painful death, which serves them right for entering your ear canal. If an object is able to be visualized externally, one can attempt removal using the appropriate tool. If, however, the object is only visible using otoscopy, then the object needs to be removed under direct visualization. This is usually done using a microscope by the ENT team. This is an ENT microscope. 
It allows you to visualize the external ear canal in much greater detail than an otoscope. However, it is a very expensive and delicate piece of equipment and should be treated with due care. There are many different ways for approaching the microscope. My preference is to stand back, then lunge. Soft objects can be grasped using forceps, either tilly oral forceps or cuffed forceps. Alternatively, suction can be used for softer objects. For firmer objects, they would have to be manually scooped out using either a blunt hook or a wax hook. This is the microscope that we use in the ENT clinic. I'm just going to have a look in Dr. Omar's ears now using a turbo kit. Okay, here we go. Here. If all three methods fail, a patient may have to be taken to theatre for removal under anaesthetic. Yeah? That's everything about foreign bodies, isn't it?